Just to preview what's coming up is an article that was written by William Gumede. And just to quote a line from it, he says, the cost of tolerating corruption, policy paralysis and leadership in action that continues to make compromises for factions within the ANC is just too high for South Africa. He goes on to say the reality is that it is impossible to appease these two main factions of the ANC while rescuing South Africa's economy and maintaining social order and political stability. He concludes by saying the only way to reverse South Africa's continued downward plunge is to put the country first. So this was in an, an article that uh, was penned by Professor William Mervyn Gomede. Uh, I think it was in the Sunday Times this uh, past weekend. And he certainly is not new in writing about the ANC politics. You may remember in 2005, um, in his book, Tabo and Becky and the Battle of the Soul of the ANC, came a bit ahead of the ANC Polokwane Conference in 2007. Now, William Gomede is an author, he's a columnist, he's an associate professor at the Witt School of Governance and the executive chairperson of Democracy Works. I think he's on the line with us. Let's just, uh, let's just ensure we were trying, we were struggling, but there he is. Good to see you. Thanks yes, so much uh, for being with us. Morning. Yeah, yeah, uh, thanks for having me again. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Always a pleasure having you. So a very interesting article that you penned uh, over this last weekend. And it, it kind of captioned South Africa versus the ANC. Perhaps you can give us a little bit of, of, of thoughts on why you chose that particular title. Yes, no, absolutely. I think, you know, right now the reality is the ANC is divided into two parties. You know, so one hand is uh, President Ramaphosa and his group of people. And on the other hand is, you know, the ANC General Secretary, uh, Mr. Is Mahasula, and his group of people. Now, in order to hold that ANC together, uh, it would mean that, you know, compromising all of the time. Now, the problem of compromising to both groups at the same time is that, you know, um, government cannot... Um, direct policy, there's paralysis, you know, lack of leadership and so on, which unfortunately we cannot do during this moment of COVID-19. I mean, this is the greatest crisis of our generation, mm. COVID-19. And either, you know, President Ramaphosa and the ANC leadership decide, well, you know, you can't have two ANC at the same time as dealing with, you know, our unemployment problem, our social problems, you know, and all of the other problems related to COVID-19. Mm. Let's, let's now fast forward just a little bit because your article came out this past weekend. Now, this week there have been a couple of developments and, and many are, are speaking to the fact that this, this could be the, the president that we've been waiting for. And, you know, I'll, I'll ask you for your views on this. We saw the NEC meeting taking place. We saw the president coming out and giving the post-NEC briefing as opposed to the secretary general, which is Ace Mahashule. You also speak to the fact that that faction is basically divided. It's the Zuma Mahashule faction. And then we talk to the Ramaphosa faction. Ramaphosa coming out and taking control. Did you see a different Ramaphosa emerging this week? No, absolutely. I mean, remember before COVID-19, you know, uh, Ramaphosa actually said extraordinarily, though, that, you know, he would rather be seen as a weak president um, uh, than being seen as dividing the ANC into two group, groups. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, if you're a president of a country, you cannot say anything like like that. You have to be, uh, he has to be a strong president. And I think for the first time, you know, we're beginning to see, you know, some kind of strong leadership um, from him um, yesterday. You know, the country has been exas exasperated, waiting for a sense of direction. Because also, unfortunately, if you think about this, was the ANC's, you know, highest leadership a body that met over the weekend, you know, of, of course, you know, just below the, the, the annual, five, annual five or the five year conferences, is that we in such a crisis, economic crisis, social crisis, political crisis, but the party spends its time on internal divisions mm -hmm. rather than coming up with an economic blueprint or social blueprint and so on. I mean, that really tells you, you know, the extent of the crisis in the ANC. But I think the president is beginning to show, I think, you know, as a glimmer of leadership is not there yet where we want him to be.
glimmer of leadership. That's, that's you know, I suppose something to, to, to look towards. But again, also in your article, you make reference to that quote that uh, the, the president did make, that he will put the ANC basically first before the country and that he does not want to divide the ANC. However, within your article, you also talk to a broken ANC and perhaps that it is time for the party to actually go their separate ways and that South Africa will uh, get over the worrying about the internal fighting within the ANC and actually get to a point where the, the governing party governs the country and not only worries about internal politics. Talk to us a little bit about this breakup of the ANC that I'm not saying you're predicting, but you set out a scenario in your article. No, no, absolutely. You know, unfortunately, the current ANC, as it is, let's call it the old ANC, is not fit for purpose for the new times, and particularly not for these extraordinary new times of COVID-19. I mean, this is a, the new normal. It is, you know, we have none of us have ever seen such troubling times in, you know, in our whole lifetimes. Um, so the old ANC, you know, is not fit to lead us to this, uh, the biggest crisis of our generation. So what m needs to be done is that we need a realignment within the ANC itself. Now, a realignment within the ANC itself will really be taking the good people and, you know, they going on their own and the sort of corrupt and bad and incompetent people on the other side will do their own thing from their own party. And we almost will have two ANC, separate ANC, you know, we already have two separate ANCs. Um, you know, the ANC of, of President Ramaphosa and the ANC of, you know, Ace Mahasula and former President Jacob Zuma's two ANCs. Now, what it now needs to do is to formally split into two different parties. And then we have, then we can have the Ramaphosa ANC governing the country, um, you know, with much clearer direction on policy and on leadership and so on. And then ANC can, uh, Ramaphosa can, can then strike alliances with other political parties. So too can, uh, you know, Ace Mahasula, Jacob Zuma, ANC can, you know, can strike alliances with other parties, whether it's the EFF or whether it's, with my, you know, uh, Herman Masaba's new political party. Then we'll have a, a realignment of our politics. And, and a realignment of our politics will be better fit you know, to deal with our current challenges. Mm. I, I want to quiz you a little bit on, on what you just said, the good ANC and the bad ANC. L let's remember it's been one ANC all this time. I mean, when we look back over the so-called Zuma years, Ramaphosa was the deputy president. We keep on emphasizing this because sometimes we, we, we tend to forget that, you know, this is just an appearance of our president, Sir Ramaphosa. He's been there the whole time. How do we draw a line and say, these are the good guys of the ANC and these are the bad guys? That's quite, quite a big statement to make. Absolutely. It's very, very difficult. And the fact is that, uh, you know, President Ramaphosa was a deputy president for almost a decade. So maybe a better way to explain it is say, you know, the less bad versus the really bad ANC. And maybe the Ramaphosa group will be the less bad ANC. Uh, you know, so we can't, unfortunately, you know, we've come to such a state, you know, the ANC is so, I mean, you, you know, so is infected with corruption that, you know, there are not many totally clean people. So one would have to say, you know, reasonably clean p people versus, you know, a really corrupt, uh, you know, so that may be a better explanation wow. um, for the ANC. Yeah, it's and unfortunately, you know, this, yes? No, 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 please carry on. I I I'll ask you afterwards. Carry on. I don't want to interrupt you. Sorry. Yeah, so this ANC, because the ANC has been going on for the last decade or so, you know, almost with an ANC with two, you know, two faces, uh, um, you, you know, you know, one, or, or rather almost two bodies, you know, the one body goes the other way, the other <laughs> in a different, you know, opposite direction. So, you know, it cannot govern yeah. uh, effectively. I mean, just from a practical example, I, I'll just see a practical example with these sort of, you know, split personality ANC. For example, if President Ramaphosa has to compromise with, uh, you know, with the Isma Hasula faction uh, at every incident, it means that, let's just say, a state-owned company needs to be reformed. Then it would mean if, and, and if the state-owned company is, is corrupt, and the, say the board needs to be, a new board needs to be appointed, then the president, because he comprom has to compromise, will then have to appoint 50% of the Ace Mahasula group, 50% of his own group, and then, you know what, you can't really get uh, a trouble the SOE 
cannot transform because, you know, the 50% of H. Mahasula, you, you know, executives will go the one way and the Ramaphosa groups come the other way. At the end, there's paralysis. So we can use that example across government. Mm -hmm. So that is why we, when people wonder and citizens ask, why is there no sense of direction in the ANC? It's because of this compromised kinds of way of decision making which paralyzed government. Yeah. You, you also say in, in your article, ba basically, that come the next elections, voters may choose to completely rid the country of the ANC and a Ramaphosa leadership if something is not done dramatically. You do put the scenario down. However, you know, you also speak about, and you've mentioned it already during the discussion about uh, this ANC breaking up, forming alliances with other parties. It almost feels that, you know, when we talk to politics in South Africa and we talk about the future, it's, it's almost like South Africa does not exist without the ANC. Th from what I'm understanding is that in some form or other, the ANC will be with us forever. Perhaps you want to speak to that. You know, I know um, that seems to be the feeling about many ANC leaders that South Africa cannot exist without the ANC. You know, that's not true. In the past, that may have been the case. Okay. But COVID-19 changes the game in South Africa. And I don't think many ANC leaders and many ANC members realize how the game will, you know, will change. Ramaphosa, unfortunately for him, his career is also on the line if he cannot get, um, you, you, you know, effective restructuring of the economy, um, you, you know, during this COVID-19 crisis. What potentially could happen if he keeps on trying to to have a unity in ANC by pleasing both factions, and then, you know, government remains in a constant state of paralysis, and it means, you know, public service delivery cannot happen, uh, jobs cannot be created, more factories closed, uh, and so on. So what then, well, two things will then happen. The first thing that will happen, because, you, you know, he will then be seen as ineffective, the Ace Mahasula and the Jacob Zuma group will then actually remove him on the basis of what well, is an ineffective precedent because there's no jobs delivery, there's no public service delivery. That's the one option. So, you know, for his own future, he will have to do something. The second option would be if he continues with a sort of compromise, uh, you know, the sort of unity type of, of you know, leadership, then um, in the next election, if the Ace Mahasula or the Jacob Zuma group of people don't take him out as leader of the ANC, then the nation won't vote for him anymore. Then the ANC won't, you know, be re-elected. That is just a reality. So it's almost a lose-lose for Ramaphosa. This unity line that he's taking is a lose-lose. He needs to do something now to rescue his own presidency and to rescue the ANC itself. Mm. I want to, you, you bring up a very interesting point because let's, let's focus on, on Paula Kwane. Let's focus on what happened to um, our former president, Thabo Mbeki. And I want to see some similarities. You, you mentioned in your previous answer because there are many people speaking to the fact that, you know, if in fact this so-called unity and Ramaphosa doesn't take control, you mentioned it again now, this could be the end of his leadership within the party. So just before Polokwane, you wrote about the ANC and in this article to make reference to the time as well, I mean you spoke to this, what insights do you draw from the two eras as comparisons where we're sitting right now? No, the ins I think the immediate thing is, Tarp and Becky, if we look back now, you know, he understood that the old ANC cannot continue in the new South Africa and that there at some point will have to be a break. And that he, what he tried to do before 2007 was to keep, you know, the best parts of the ANC intact and cut off, you know, the rot um, in the ANC. So, you know, it's almost a reduced ANC, you know, a rejuvenated energy and uh, ANC, a new energized uh, ANC with some parts, its rotten parts and its not so good parts, you, you know, to, you know to, be, to be cut out. Now, he failed to do that. And, and because he tried to do that, you know, there was a rebellion against him. And of course, you know, um, Jacob Zuma won um, at that time. You know, Ram uh, Ramaphosa is now confronted with exactly the same stark choice, but this time it is just more urgent for the country itself. 
you know, last time, it maybe perhaps it was not urgent for a country, but it was urgent for the ANC. Now it is urgent for a country that he has, you know, he has no option, you know, but to, you know, that, let's call it, you know, what Tarbon Becky tried and failed to do, he has to do it now, you know, and if he doesn't do it, the ANC itself will crash or he himself will crash. So, you know, he has no option but to almost the incompleted work of Tarbon Becky to modernize the ANC, to make it fit for purpose for our times, for the times of technology um, and so on. Mm. He has, he, not, not only does he have the opportunity, in fact, he doesn't have the opportunity, he has to do that. If he doesn't do it, there will be no ANC in government in the next election. Yeah. Or he won't be the president either. P Professor, you've spoken a lot about the ANC. You've spoken a lot about South Africa. My, my final question to you as we, as we wrap up the show here on SABC2, what does South Africa look like going forward with the same ANC in place? If the ANC stays the way it is right now and does not change, what does our future look like? You know, unfortunately, it doesn't look good. I mean, this is the biggest crisis. You know, just think what is happening now. Um, we have, for the first time, you know, we will have almost double the unemployment levels from 27% during the time of, you know, President Tarbon Becky. We're now, you know, talking about 50% unemployment because of COVID-19. You know, for the first time, we will see in the post-1994 period, you know, the middle class, we the white middle class, black middle class, you know, are now plunging into poverty. You know, so in the past, you know, we had, you know, one group of people in poverty. Now we will have, you know, people that used to be well off and were doing very well will also now be in poverty. You must imagine a 50% unemployment. This is a and, and, and new of South Africa we've never even envisaged. Now, you know, in that context, we can't have the old ANC because the old ANC don't have the capacity, they don't have the ideas, they don't have the competent people. You know, so, so we not only need a new ANC, but we need to have all of South Africa's resources, you know, to rebuild this country. We will have to have the private sector, civil society, every citizen with a skill will need to be mobilized. Now, currently with the old ANC, a small group of people are running the whole country okay. and they don't have the ideas and they mm. don't have the capacity and they are not focusing on the country either because they're focusing on their own internal uh, you know, fights. All right, we have to leave it there, Prof. Thanks so much for talking to us. Professor William Gomede sharing his views with us regarding politics within ANC and how, of course, it uh, interfaces with the running of the country.